What's up, man? What's up? It's so good to be here. I really appreciate it, man. I'm really happy. Yeah, you're looking here. like Stevie Wonder over there. Yo, yeah. I'm trying. Yo, I'm trying to. <laughs> you know, do I'm my thinking thing. innovations on this. We right. got we got some visuals <laughs> going on. I got. I'm rocking my etnias, you know. Shout out. All right, man. <laughs> so, um, congratulations on this new uh, release that you uh, put together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Man. It's called Yo. Yo, just ride with me. <laughs> Yo, just ride with me, man. You know, you know. What was the inspiration behind that? Um, Yo, just ride with me started after getting back off of this previous tour with Odyssey and Good o and Good Company. And who's Odyssey and Good Company? Odyssey is if an you, people don't know people. If, if shoot, people, don't people know. know. Yeah, people yeah. Know. If you don't, I want know, you to you brag should. a little bit. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Odyssey, um, the odd Odyssey, O D D I S E E, and Good Company. Odyssey is a producer slash MC. An amazing person, oh, yeah. um, world traveler. I've been touring with him um, for the last eight years now, and I've been doing music for him since 2001. Um, a, a minute. For a minute, man. For a minute. So I got um, with Odyssey when you really started hearing the instrumentals come out um, after Foot in the Door, and I think that was his first like solo project, which was that was with um, DJ Jazzy Jeff. Um, so... After that, I met him, and we just started doing tons of instrumentals, and that's how I really I started getting my name out there and did, started doing Did really that things. keep you from making this new uh, So Ride With Me album? Uh, so, 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 yeah. Yo, yo. So, anyway, so yeah. anyway, fast forward. So, it gets back it gets back to this last um, tour that we were on. Um, I had just tons of music, and I was like, all my friends, I kept saying, yo, just ride with me. I wish you could just go with me. I wish, I wish you could just hear what I'm doing out there. And it came from a, a point of sitting in my house and like curating all these beats and um, having local artists and um, some friends play on them. And I was like, yo, this really speaks for like what I was doing while I was on tour. And so I just couldn't get off of the title saying, yo, just ride with me. Yo, just ride. You know what? I'm calling that the next <laughs> instrumental album that's going to be, yo, just ride with me. Let's get a crazy car. Let's get a Mad Max theme. <laughs> oh, okay. So that was all intent. It was yeah, all intentional. Yeah, yeah. Then. So it's like, and then, you know, it was, it was this kind of brainstorming in my head. And I said, y'all want to do this? Well, it just so happens, you know, my uh, neighbor has an awesome car. Uh, my other neighbor had a camera. <laughs> I was like, no, let's shoot the, this. The, the album is really dope. It's got a. I love the. I love the perspective. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, I love that coat as well, man. Oh, got thank the, you. You know, my dad gave me that coat. Are you for real? Yeah, he, he, he was like, it's, it's, he it's, said, it's, boy, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I want you to wear this coat. Somewhere in life, you gonna need a coat like are they, this. Are those shoulder pads? Is that where you Yo, put that, like a shotgun in there? Like, I think you ever so. seen those things of those trench coats <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. hiding a, a shotgun yeah. in the it's, wow. With my Red Dead Redemption coat. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. My dad he gave me an oversized coat and I loved it and it doesn't fit me and I thought it was awesome for the video for the um, for the shoot. So wow. I don't know. These things just are in my closet. <laughs> so w when's the album coming out? What's the deal? The album comes out. Um, and how do you choose a date? I, you know what? After the project's all done, I'm always like, okay, what date should I put this out with? So I, I usually say, I don't care, whatever, and just throw it out. This time, I asked the people, and I said, what, what do you think I should do? And they said, well, you know, you could put it out on the other date after the 19th. And I was like, you know what? I'm not doing that. <laughs> and, but I wanted it to come out, you know, within two weeks. So I said, April 19th. Everybody agreed. Everybody thought that was a good date to come out. So and that was it, man. Just curating. So it's not like one of the things you you make the album you and you shelve it for a year for some crazy. Sometimes reason. it is. Sometimes it is. That's how track names named tracks was my my one before this one. That joint was ready to go a while ago, and I was kind of shelving it and Why? Like redoing it. I don't know. I just wasn't happy with it. You know, I, I just wasn't. I wasn't. It wasn't my best hand of work until. You know, I said, okay, I'm going to recurate this. I broke apart the beats and had people play on them, put them back together. And I said, okay, now this is ready. But before, it just sounded like I made it on a Casio keyboard. And, you know, I, that ain't good. Okay. <laughs> and so I, I ain't good. So I had to get some things. I, I got some more plugins and stuff like that and upgraded my studios. And now, yeah. Now it's like wow. This so so sound. so this one right here is this is are you like really proud of it? How does it? Mm. Well, first of all, before we get to, you're going to perform live, ladies and mm -hmm. gentlemen. But how does this one differ from the one before the album before? Um, this one is just a little bit more different because I added a little bit more elements to it. I think people should so, describe your style. First of all, so, describe. Yeah, well, how yeah. do you describe your style? So when it comes to my style, I'm I'm more of this 
soul neo soul's perspective i'm uh, it's a little bit of everything when it comes to funk r&b soul a lot of the urban elements that we have and that we hold dear and love when it comes to urban music is a, a part of my music so like i'm more of the laid back when it comes to the instrumental put it on get your drive on but still hear some explosive beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's not, it's not, it's, you have this element of this melodic element to it, but it still has beats that you can still knock your head to. You Absolutely. know what I mean? So, yeah. and that, and that's what I'm always keen on. I'm like, the beat's got to bang. The beat's got to bang. We got to make sure you can knock your head to that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. so this one, this new one, it's got you oh, yeah. singing. It's got you. Well, this, this new one? one, this new one still has a little bit of me singing. It has a little bit of my friend Coco Chantel. What's up? Shout out. She's on it. She's singing a little bit. But that's about it. It's mostly an instrumental album, but I'm just giving you a little taste for my solo album coming out. Okay, Barry. You know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to do right now. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so, I, um, so I'm just giving a little taste here and there. But I promise you my fourth album will be a solo-inspired album, which... Maybe I might play the new track for you today. No! Hey, I want my mind back. I want my mind back. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, right. I'm still, I, I know my manager is gonna hit my phone and be like, "Don't, don't, don't do it." Uh, <laughs> let's, can we give the people a taste of what what you're all about musically? Yeah, I would love to. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the composition that you're about to present us with? Yeah, so this um, first track I want to play with you, uh, for you is called Life of Living. Life of Living. Um, no, I mean, it's it's exactly what the title means, Life of Living. Our life is worth living. Our life. Have you worth. always been that kind of, like, optimistic, flower-picking? Yes. Fl- are, you, are, you yes. are you a hippie? Are you a hippie? Yeah, I get yo, you know what I mean. I'm rocking my my son made me this this shirt right yeah, here. You I'm, see what I'm rocking yeah, right yeah, now? It's for real. It's my dope. son made me the this. tie dye man, yeah, tie dye all man. day. So I mean, no, uh, my son hooked it up. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely been optimistic. I've definitely been that guy that's a go getter. Like, come on, let's do this. Let's let's make it happen. Um, just because of where we live and what we come out of, and you know, and there's so much to be sad about. It's like oh, I'm just done being sad or whatever i want to live my life to the fullest and i want to show people that you can do that you know what i mean yeah. i want to show people like a lot of people on my block for them to go they live in york pennsylvania for them to go 20 minutes to lancaster's like nah man i that's too far away i don't know i can't really do that let alone go on a plane and go overseas wow so so you have to be like a light to show people like nah man you can go you can do what you want like these places that you look on tv and say oh i would like to go there nah go it's it's really easy to do. Like, you know what I mean? It people don't people don't take that opportunity to just say, Okay, let me let my guard down and just go. Ralph went. If Ralph went if Ralph <laughs> Yeah, if Ralph went, yo, we'll be good, you know. Right. But um but yeah, yeah. I I really wanna let people know that, you know, this life is worth living. You know, this life of living is worth living. It's so beautiful. The world is beautiful. Wow. And Live it to the fullest. Wow, man. Yeah. This, that's a great <laughs> intro. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to turn down my mic. It's all about you, Mags FM, Ralph Real, and the name of the song, Ralph, is called... Life of Living. Ralph, Life of Living. Yeah. All right. Enjoy. Oh, my God. 
something right there a little something <laughs> that's just one person doing all that right yeah jeez you have to break it down for me mate how does something like that <laughs> manifest yo man studio 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 i know it's a studio but did you have a dream oh, did, did, was it, did it come together did it come was it just a when, dream so when i when i make beats a lot of times when they first start i'm always kind of on my phone always doing like little melodies and things like that or beatboxing my phone i'm the biggest for like i'm big for that so um i'm always recording that as soon as i record that i'm always in the studio and making the beat to that and then breaking it apart so that the beat came first oh yeah oh yeah okay and then like okay so you, you marinate on the beat mm -hmm. or and did the did you have like a melody line uh, always you know, melodies or? and lines always playing with melodies and things like that but i I always tend to sometimes go drum route first or they'll go piano route. But whatever route I take, which was my phone, beatboxing, the keys, it always is sculpted right when I get in the studio. I'm a studio addict. Um, a lot of people have to, you know, go outside or go do something or go hear some trains right. or some cars. Nah, man, I like to, when I work, I like to be in the environment that I'm working at because I hate thinking of something and then having to wait to put that down. Right. So, so you, I mean, it's to the point I got a studio on my phone. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm doing GarageBand on my phone. Like, or however I can get it out and make sure it has a little sound for me to be like, okay, it's So ready. what are you bringing into the studio for that track? Um, so with that studio, with with that track right there, um, you got to hear me on everything, to tell you the truth, except for um, uh, bass, my man. Shout out to uh, my man, Stefan. He plays um, a lot of bass and a lot of uh, guitar on my tracks. Uh, he's in my band also, Ralph Real and the Family Jam. And um, and with, on that track, I played drums, I played the keys, you know, the, the arrangements, everything on that. Um, but every time I do something, I'll always play it out first, and I'll play like a fake guitar or something like that. And then be like, oh, say, Stefan. Oh, when you say play, play it out on the keyboard? Yeah, okay, so I'll always okay. play it out first, and then okay. have Stefan come back and retract oh, okay, it. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're laying down the outline, mm -hmm. essentially. And then you All have, the are you telling your, your musicians like, hey, Sound like this, or just bring or musician bring your flavor to the sound show. like this. <laughs> Yo, a lot of like a lot of my musicians will tell you they'll be like, yeah, Ralph will be like, he'll he'll play you for like two measures and be like, all right, cool, I'm done. That's all I need <laughs> because I'm literally still an element of hip hop of chopping, cutting, you know, and things like that. Because I still want you to get this hip hop flavor, um, but there's sometimes where I'll be like, Stefan, do your thing, and I'll just let him go. And then I'll chop some parts out that I really like, or I'll keep the whole, you know, um, the whole solo that he'll do sometimes, or things like that. But now he knows me. Now he's like, "Oh yeah, I know. Stay in the pocket." My thing is pocket. Stay in the pocket. Was, was that a difficult? <laughs> was was that a easy track to make? Yeah, man. I mean, all my tracks are, um, I, I would say, easy to make because I love making tracks. So it like, look, it does come easy because I love doing it. You know, it's something that I love to do. 
Um, no, because the quality of it's it's very professional, right? Oh, thank you. It sounds like you. A, there's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you'll think that this guy took like a good month and he brought in like the <laughs> A-list musicians from all over the planet. Yo, thank God for setups like uh, like what you're looking at now on my keyboard and my focus, right? Thank God for like smaller setups so I can just go to people. Um, I'm, I love to be in the element that people are comfortable in. So like if they're comfortable at their home, Word, I'll come to you. You don't have to come to me. I'll come to your crib. I'll set up, play, let's go. Like, it's no problem. But having a smaller setup lets me, allows me to do that. Because a lot of people are just comfortable where they're at. Right, right, so, right. So, I mean, it's so easy for me to just go to them, and, you know. Plus, I get to go a lot of places because of it. Like, Ralph, can you come to D.C.? Yes. Ralph, can you come to New York? Of course. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. Sure, no problem. And I get paid to do this? Oh, my goodness, yes. So, uh, are you are you are you trained? Are um, you so self taught. So the- yes, I'm trained in drums. Drums I played um for 18 years um with a teacher. His name was Clyde Baytom Lucas. He passed away, um but he was like my musical father. He's uh-huh. the one that was like, yo, like you really got something here. And seeing him tour and go around the world made me be like, I want to do that. Right, right. And he was like, well, if you want to do this, you got to start with these drums. Right. You know? And, and from the drums you progress to... And so from drums I progress to keys and um, I went to a, a... I went. I started out, I went to a massive church. The church I went to... Are you a church guy? Like um, a, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, musical yeah. Came out of church, yeah. Came out of church, but it's crazy because I didn't come out of a black church, which people thought, like, as soon as they see me, they're like, oh, you came out of a black church and I didn't. I came out of a white church that was just a regular (laughs) non-denomination in New Holland, Pennsylvania. And it just so happened the church was like a mega church. (laughs) You know what I mean? So they had everything there. So um, they would would always be like, yeah, Rob, you can play drums. Yeah, you can play keys. Yeah, you can go do whatever you want. And so I did a lot of concerts there, like, you know, dancing and doing youth conventions and playing with, like, the worship team and things like that. Right, right. But it was crazy because I didn't go to my first – well, I mean, I had been going to, like, black churches with like my family but when i first started going and joined like a real predominantly black church was when i was like oh yeah this is where i'm supposed to be what was okay. i doing All right right and that and i was like 17 years old i was like oh it's over it's over and did, like, did, did the church sound like going to the church and mm-hmm. being in church has it into is it does has it does it influence your of course stuff? it teaches like every element so okay. i got to go to one church where they're predominantly it was like rock and roll and, you know, and contemporary rock and roll to another church that's contemporary urban music and black music. So I got every element very quickly. Okay. And so that's where I lived. I lived in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where I lived in the hood of Lancaster. So, but I was still the minority because it was nothing but, you know, um, Puerto Ricans, um, Cubanos, uh, Cubans, Mexicans, Dominicans. Right, right, right. So I was still like this minority in, in a weird fashion, but because of it, I got to learn everything quickly. So where I would go to this one church where it was like, oh, you don't know about like, you know, rock and roll and this and that. And, or, and then I'd go home and they'd be like, oh, you don't know about salsa, marengue, bachata, bomba, somba. And it's like, whoa, wait, what? Like, right, <laughs> you right. know what I mean? And then I have my mom with like, oh, we got to hear this gospel. You got to hear this. And then I have my dad saying, well, you were listening to some Al Green and some Teddy P so, and some Marvin Gaye and so, some Stevie. So, so. You make, it makes sense that mm-hmm. you, when you, when um, someone like Odyssey yeah. picks you up as a keyboardist, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That. If if he wants to go into like a a jazz vibe or yeah. go in, you know what I mean. You you can just like you know really quickly, right? Really, and quickly. that's why we work so good together because we literally talk to each other in music. So he can literally be like, "Yo, you know that nineteen seventies lead on that Marvin Gaye track? Yeah, I got you. All right, cool. Oh, Pull is it, it like that? Is that yeah? And it's like that, yo. We can literally talk in this musical yo, sense. Fam, that that's is so wicked. dope because we've been dope. working with each other for so long, you know. And um, but. Like being with people now, like with Odyssey, is just another element because now I'm getting this el- this element of tons of Middle Eastern sounds. Him, him being black and Sudanese mixed, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like oh my gosh, the world is your oyster when it comes to music. Now it's like his his rhythms and his cadences are ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. They're right. so mind blowing, and I get to learn just an- I get to put another piece of what I do. To the puzzle, and it's is, is it, does it require a different hat being a session? I'm, I'm, I'm saying session player, like as a mm-hmm. playing for somebody else, yeah. right? Um, being a, a producer because you produce for other people as well, yes. And being now being a solo artist is a different hat, it's a different, a different. I'm, I'm thinking, is it a different mindset 
Oh, diff- you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think you said it better with hats. <laughs> it's okay. definitely, it's definitely like wearing different hats. Um, because every time you go into a new environment, like we know, uh, you have to change to appeal to what your customer wants. Um, so yeah, being a producer and being a live musician, totally different fields of things. I think being a musician, as I discover with a lot of musicians, is they'll come into a session they want to overplay. Just because they're so used to playing on the stage. So you'll have be like, oh, yeah, play on this track. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't want you to do all that. I just wanted you to play these chords. You know, because they're so used to playing on the stage. So you have to literally, you know, break yourself down and say, no, I'm in the studio now. And now I'm doing tracking. I'm literally, you know, putting pieces of the puzzle together, you know, to make this beautiful sound. Are you a good producer? Like, are you able to, like... I love one set the tone mm. and to keep people in their pocket. You know what yes, I mean? Which I'm, is I have problems doing. I'm very good at that. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'm very good at it. I'm very good at making sure everybody's in their place. Oh, okay. It's so easy to cut people without saying anything. You know, they'll listen back and be like, oh, you, you don't have that guitar part in there. Oh, no, no. Oh, well, you didn't like it. Oh, no, no, this is overplayed. It's all good. Well, wow. you know, it's so easy to make people be like, oh, man, next time I'm Ralph, I better like. <laughs> Just listen. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean I'm like that when I work with somebody else, though. Right, So right, let's say right. if you hire me for a track, I'm not like that. Then I have to wear another hat. Mm. I have to shut up. I have to let my guard down, and I have to say, hey, what would you like? Ralph, we want you to play this bass line like this. It's written out. Here it is. No problem. So you have to be able to humble yourself as well. Is, is, you know I mean? is that a taught thing for you? Because I, I think... I yeah. think maybe you want to like get some advice, but that is that a learned thing or that's definitely a I mean for me it was a learning thing because I always wanted to be on top of everything. I always wanted, even though like it might be somebody else's track, I was like, oh, I need a little bit of Ralph Real on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it, 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 who, who wants that guy? You know what I mean? So is it, no, is it, like, it is like that. So isn't it? yeah, and you learn it quickly. Like like what I'm telling you, there was a lot of times where I would come into the studio and everybody knows when I do well, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people know that work with me. When I do courses, I stack them like heavy. Sometimes there's like eight tracks and it's like this huge choir singing. Wow. And Deuce was like, yo, bro, that's too much. Yo, can, you just, can you just do you and your voice? You know what I mean? And so many times I would argue people like, nah, that's how I do it. But that's not how we want it. Oh, you're paying. Oh, you're paying me to. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah, let me let me learn this real quick. You who, fall back on who, these, yeah, yeah. You fall back on a few hundreds. because then you're biting the hand that's feeding you. You know what I mean? Right, it's right. almost like, yo, don't don't do that. You know, they have a way that they want their music to sound as well. So you definitely have to learn how to humble yourself, but also be assertive too. Because there's some there's some music that I'm like, nah, I ain't doing that. It is. <laughs> there's sometimes I'm like, I ain't doing that. You know, and there's sometimes you're like, yeah, I'll do it. But I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm just, these questions are popping into my head. Is it, um, is it, are, are, you, are you, is it better to be like, uh, I can do it all, or I can just do one exceptionally well, in terms of like, styles of music, That's a good question. being, in, being multi-instrumentalist, as opposed to like, you know, I'll get this guy, because this guy's the number one keyboardist on, I mean, what's, what's the best? I think they both work, I mean, um, I think you should definitely uh, be cautious with it. I think cautious if, with what? Well. Like I think if you can play guitar and you have something going for you, where you're the studio musician or you know you're a band musician and you're playing and you're like, yo, like I am that keyboard, I am that you know that guitar player that everybody calls and it's working for me. Then yeah, it don't broke but it's not fixed. But that doesn't say that you can't try out and do other things. I mean, yeah, I know there's tons of musicians right now that can do everything. There's tons. There's just tons. There's tons of musicians that can play drums, keys, bass, and they can go in the studio and they can do all that for you. Um, and, and that's awesome, you know. And there's some people that are just like, no, I'm really good with this. Do I think there's a better way for one? No. I think if you can do that, if you can do multiple things and be that multiple guy in the studio, by all means, great. But don't let everybody know, you know everything that's in the chamber <laughs> you know what i mean okay. don't let hey, don't give all your shooters out so there's sometimes i'll be like yeah 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 i can play keys for you and there might be a totally another producer there you know making the beat or you know instructing us what to do there might be sometimes like i just need drums oh yeah i can do that for you i can lay that down no problem you know sometimes it's like i just need an engineer sure no problem i'm sitting there recording 
you know, but but I can I can divvy out what I'm doing, you know, but I don't have to let everybody know like, oh, yeah, and by the way, I do this, I do this, I do this, and yo, I'm trying to do this and this and this and this. No, there's probably people in the room that might be just good at that one thing that I'm saying that I do too. So, you know, it's being respectful to where you're at at the time. But, yeah, when people come to work with me, usually they're coming because they know Ralph Rose is going to give you a solid track. That, you know, he's going to are, are you are you Are you, like, the, uh, the soul, like, if you want that soul, like, that neo soul, like, you know, heartfelt, you know, yeah. minor chord stuff? Yeah, of are course. You, are you that dude? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, I'm so I'm so assertive though. I ain't I mean I'm soft. <laughs> no, 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 Petrin. For no, real, no, dog. No, man, because your beats bang, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, but you got that. It's it's deep. Yeah, I definitely. I and it's definitely, emotional. Yeah, it's emotional. Exactly, it's emotional. Exactly. But you got that. You got that boom back yeah, yeah. all day. I, dev I, I definitely. I uh, definitely. <laughs> I'm not trying to pull you down. Bro. <laughs> no, I definitely be. I definitely be. But the girls, my, women. But women love that kind of. You know. Love it, fam. Yeah, my 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 <laughs> sister loves it. Work, yeah. work. My work, friends love it. Work. Can we get another tune? Yeah, I'm man, I'm talking way too much. Which which one? Which one? Yo, uh, so you're thinking about? So um, shout out to Nipsey Hustle. You know <gasps> what I mean? I mean, um, yeah. R.I.P. Yo, that guy is. Were you amazing. a big Nipsey fan? Yeah, man. Um, I I want to say it was a little bit later for me though. Um, me too. Me too. Um. My, I don't know if you've heard of I Am Nobody, amazing producer. Um, yeah, of course. Really good guy. Uh, he's the one that was like, yo, you got to hear Nipsey, yo, like, you got to be on him. He was, he was putting me on to a couple other people at that time. Like, I think Freddie Gibbs was, you know. I like Freddie Gibbs, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah Freddie yeah, Gibbs yeah, was yeah. doing his thing. Absolutely. And he was like, yo, these are artists that, you know, I'm really trying to work with, and I think I got connects with, and blah, blah. But anyway, so he's the one that kind of, like, really was like, yo, you better listen. And I was like, where where have I been? Like, why did I just catch him? Why did I just catch him? I, I so actually saw him, like I saw him on The Breakfast ago. Club. That's what really oh, took yeah. off for me. Yeah, that was dope. Come on, yeah. And then I then I checked for then I checked mm -hmm. the music mm -hmm. again, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah you're right. I'm sorry for cutting your throat. Oh no, it's totally all right. So yeah. um so yeah, yeah. So shout out to him. So anyway, I love West Coast music. Um this joint's called What you like about West, West Coast music? What, what oh, like? the, the 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 instrumentation. To come on, man! Like what? You got they, those squiggly things on them? Got yeah, them man! Like they got you know they got the leads. They got yo like yo West Coast music to me is like I just like some West Coast funk, some G funk, man. Yeah, oh yeah, god! Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Dame Funk. He's one of my wow. You like that guy? What? He's one of my favorite. He's like one of my favorite West Coast producers. That guy, man. Dame yeah, Funk. Yeah, Dame. In fact, I, I mean this one I'm about to play you. I literally. Um, I played it. I I, I um, put it up on Instagram, just a little cut, and I literally made this beat in um when we were in um uh, Vietnam, and I was in my hotel, and I woke up in the morning, I was like, I'm gonna make a beat, and I made a West Coast you, joint. You, <laughs> Shout out to Dame you, Funk. You. I was in Vietnam, fam. That's no lie, in Vietnam, and I think recently, I was, not in not during the war. You know, no, <laughs> not 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 during the war. I, I won't shoot nobody. Uh, but I literally, I think I was even wearing a shirt. You could check Instagram, and. And I made this joint and I put it up and Dame Funk put like, you know, his little thumbs up to it. Are you serious? And I was like, yo, I was like shouting out like, yo, Dame Funk, what's up? So I really love that guy, man. Uh, no, he's amazing. Yo, yeah, he's, he's amazing. So he's amazing, man. Yeah. And I love his stories. But anyway, shout out Dame Funk. So yeah, I'm going to play this joint called Wes in it. All right. Uh, Max FM, Ralph Real, hang out, enjoy the music. Shout out West Coast. 
Yeah. Nipsey Hussle, we love you, man. R.I.P. Dame Funk, what up? Dr. J, what up? Snoop, what up? You know, wow! Some West, some West stuff for you. <laughs> and that's all you, right? Yes, yes. That track right there is me. My man Stefan played a little guitar on that too, as well. Is that available? April nineteenth, man. That's. <sighs> I'm playing you new stuff right now, fam. Oh, wow! Wow! I'm wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the name of the album? Yo, just ride with me on all your platforms. So, let me ask you a question, right? Check this out, right? Okay. Um, you, you're not signed. Are you signed? Uh, I got a management deal. I got a management okay. deal. Okay. But I'm not signed. So you've label. made it? Yeah. Okay. But, okay. But independently, kind yeah. of. <laughs> um, so who, are they, do they handle, so when you're man, under, under a management deal, just mm -hmm. help me understand it, mm -hmm. right? A management deal means what, essentially? Now? So a management deal is basically taking care of my everyday, um, like I would say my my major bookings. So my management deal is really good because I can really pick what I want them to come into or not. But they handle all my major deals that's happening. So anything contract wise that goes across the table when it comes to shopping my music and shopping it to different record companies or things like that. Like um it just, right they just frees you up to do to yes, create. It frees me up to create and lets them take care of the business. Like right now, the first thing that they got me, which I can talk about, which is awesome, is um YouTube. I was on the YouTube audio library. So I was I was one of the featured producers for that. So um so YouTube like leased um ten of my beats out and they just um put them out there for their audio library for people to use um for anything that they have. It's a really good gig. It's a it's an awesome gig. But um so um so yeah i got featured on that with youtube that was that was really amazing yeah. and now it's now it's like shop season where you know i you, got you a go, lot what's what does that mean shop, shop season you're means talking all this terminology shop mate. season for me is saying the factory is done meaning everything is done the the the, the product is here so now it's 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 that year for me in 2019 where i'm really shopping to major labels um as a producer and um and also and also doing my solo thing on the side but my solo thing on the side is literally you know just to you know stroke my own back a little bit because <laughs> i just love doing it but production wise is what i'm mainly heading for right now as in this season that i'm in is production 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 do you enjoy this stage of making music like yes. you've made the music and now you gotta in you know you gotta mm. put it on the mark on the on to the public mm -hmm. and yeah. put your face out there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, it's crazy because my even though I tour all the time and I'm with you know an amazing band, I still get to hide you know uh, behind Odyssey a little bit. But now that it's me and putting my own face out there, yeah, it's a little nerve wracking. Do I do I like it? Yeah, I'd love to go and and and, and talk about you know, the creative part and things like that. But yeah, it is a little nerve wracking for me. So sometimes I'm like, oh, here we go. Like my niece and nephew, shout out to my nephew, Jonathan. He's right over here. It's his birthday. Yeah. Oh, it's your you birthday. Know what I mean? oh, birthday happy tomorrow. birthday. Da, 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 da. All that good stuff. Shout out to Kelly. Kelsey. Kelsey. No, no, Kelly's my Oh, Kelly. Yeah, Kelly's right here. I'm right. <laughs> I thought you were looking at Kelly. <laughs> shout got out to Kelsey. Hello, Kelsey. Hi, Kelly. How you doing? But um yeah yeah so um but now, yeah yeah I'm but now it's like okay it has to happen though this is this is a part of the this is the part of the process and yeah I like every part of the process I like all parts of the process of doing what you got to do because it adds to the story and it adds to the story of your life and music and what you've been doing so I like I like I like it all but yeah this is the little bit of the nerve wracking part. <laughs>